Michael Hunter has called out the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury. He said that if he could fight any of the top heavyweights, Fury would be the one. He also talks about the possibility of fighting Anthony Joshua, Alexander Usyk and Deontay Wilder. But with regards to Fury, he believes he's got Fury's number and that he would stop him. I mean, these are bold claims. Now, they did fight in the amateurs. Tyson Fury won on points. Michael Hunter claims that it was a bad decision and that yet he actually hurt Tyson Fury badly in that fight. Now, who knows who's telling the truth, you know, whether Michael Hunter actually did that. We know that they fought each other, but in terms of how the fight went, who knows? What I can tell you is, having boxed amateur myself and been around boxing for many, many years, there are definitely a lot of bad decisions in amateur boxing, but there's also a lot of fighters who just can't accept or admit defeat. There's also a lot of guys out there who don't understand the amateur scoring system because the criteria are very different to professional scoring. So there's also that as well. Now, is it possible that Michael Hunter got the better of Tyson Fury in their amateur fight? Yeah, it's possible. I mean, to put it in perspective, Tyson Fury was a good amateur, but he did lose to people like David Price. And you wouldn't pick David Price to beat Tyson Fury now, would you? Because some fighters improve more than others, and Tyson Fury has improved tremendously since his amateur days. I mean, quite honestly, Tyson Fury is one of the most improved fighters I've ever seen. To go from a, a guy who was going life and death with people like John McDermott to end up where he is now, I mean, the improvement is incredible. So, yeah, maybe in the amateurs he had issues with certain guys. Doesn't mean he'd have issues with him now. But then again, you know, Michael Hunter may have improved. Well, in fact, he's, I'm sure he has improved since the amateurs. So, it's a fight I'd like to see, personally. Tyson Fury versus Michael Hunter. We can't just allow Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder just, just keep fighting each other until the cows come home, taking on cream puffs in between. That's what you call some joke business. That's what you call a con job, right? We want to see them fight a, a host of different contenders out there, top contenders, hungry guys, young guys. Michael Hunt is one of them. I'd like to see the fight. Tyson Fury hasn't fought a small, mobile fighter who came with real ambition since Steve Cunningham. And Cunningham's movement and speed gave Tyson Fury a lot of trouble. Fury was actually behind on the scorecards at the time that he uh, knocked Steve Cunningham out. He, he couldn't box with Cunningham. He had to, you know, impose his size and strength on him because Cunningham was too fast for him to box with. So look, maybe Fury's improved enough to the point where he can deal with a small guy like that much better now. You know, a guy who's mobile and quicker than him and stuff like that. Maybe. But then again, maybe not. We won't know for sure until he actually gets in the ring with somebody like that again. Yeah, so that's something I would like to see. I know there's lots of people writing Michael Hunter off as a top contender. I've seen them in the comments section on many of my videos. But you guys need to go look up people like Jimmy Young. You know, you guys need to go look up Michael Spinks. There were lots of smaller guys who came up to heavyweight. And because of their speed and slickness and all that kind of stuff. And by the way, uh, Jimmy Young was always a heavyweight, all right? As far as I'm aware, anyway. Uh, Michael Spinks came up, but Jimmy Young was a fairly small heavyweight. And he beat George Foreman. I mean, who would think that somebody like Jimmy Young, a light punching guy, a, a relatively small guy, could beat the great George Foreman? And this was in the, you know, se excuse me, in the 70s. Or was it the early 80s when he fought Foreman? It was very, very late 70s, early 80s he fought George Foreman. That was Foreman's last fight before he retired for 10 years and then came back later on. I think it was late 70s. So, yeah, you guys need to do your research, man. There have been small fighters who have come up and fought these big juggernaut heavyweights and given them loads of problems. And I think Michael Hunter is going to be one of those guys. He's already proved he can mix it with the big boys, right? Did you see what he did to Martin Bacoli? Did you see what he did to Ustinov? I know Ustinov was never any great shakes and he's seen better days. But still, Martin Bacoli was certainly a young, you know, big, strong man. And he handled him, stopped him. So I think people are underestimating Michael Hunter 
And I think he's got some some upsets in him. I really do. I'm not saying he's going to go and out there and be the king of the division. I don't think he will. But I do think he's going to cause some upsets in the top 10. Because people underestimate him due to his size. And they think that everybody has to be a knockout puncher. I saw some people saying, oh, he couldn't even stop an old Povetkin. Povetkin's a tough man. He's only been stopped once, right? And you don't need to be a massive knockout puncher to be successful at heavyweight. You know, how long have people been watching boxing? Like five minutes? Evander Holyfield was never a massive knockout puncher at heavyweight. Jimmy Young was never, I mean, Muhammad Ali was never a massive knockout puncher, particularly in the 70s, you know, where he lost a lot of his athleticism. He was never a massive knockout puncher at heavyweight. I mean, Larry Holmes always had respectable power, but again, he was never a massive knockout puncher. Tyson Fury himself is not a massive knockout puncher. So, yeah, I think people are way off when they're acting like Hunt has got no chance because he's not knocking out Povetkin. Seriously, people. I don't know how long you've been watching boxing for if that's a deal breaker for you. But anyway, let's have a read of what he said about Tyson Fury. He said, if I could choose to fight any of the top guys, it would be Fury. I've already been in the ring with his, him as an amateur. I had to fight him and I fought very well. He was out on his feet, but the judges gave him the victory. But I definitely did a lot more damage. We were supposed to fight again, but he supposedly got injured. (laughs) So I guess he's suggesting there that Fury didn't want no more smoke. He goes on to say, I would have to fight him, but I would absolutely be comfortable doing it. I've got his number. I would stop him. All right, bold claims. But hey, if you're calling people out and you actually intend to fight them, then be as bold as you want with your claims, you know? If you're actually intending to fight him, it's all good. Okay, he talks about AJ. He says there was mutual respect after our fights. We saw each other before uh, a few times, but didn't say anything to each other. After we found respect, I would love to fight AJ. He showed me a lot in his last fight because there was a lot of pressure on him, which I could only imagine. Indeed, you know, people really don't appreciate the amount of pressure AJ's under. Far more pressure than any other heavyweight out there. You know, but anyway, Hunter goes on to say, Uh, which I could only imagine with regards to the pressure. Uh, He did what he was supposed to do, which tells me that he has grown. That inspires me to fight him. He will continue to do exceptionally well in his career. I don't think he should fight me with the style that he used to beat Ruiz. He can't beat me at that game. The law is to fight the boxers and to box the fighters. One is the boxer. One is the fighter. I will be the boxer. All right. What else we got here? He talks about Deontay Wilder. He says, I have the style to avoid his right hand. It would come down to my mentality. When you're the fighter that I am, it depends on your mind state when you go in there. I have options, different ways to go about things, but sometimes you just need to keep it simple. I would make it very easy for myself against Wilder, like his fight with Luis Ortiz, but Ortiz didn't faint and move his head, so it was uh, a matter of time until he got hit. Indeed, it was. I mean... It baffles me, I'll I'll do a separate video about this, but it baffles me how people looked at that version of Luis Ortiz and felt as though Wilder was in there with a top three heavyweight. I mean, the guy was slow as molasses. He wasn't moving his head. He was standing right in front of Deontay Wilder. And even more baffling was the fact that Ortiz decided to fight that way. That really shows a lack of knowledge of the opponent, you know? Because fighting that way got him knocked out the first time. If you press forward against Wilder and you're slow and there's not much head movement there, you're standing right in front of him, he is going to catch you. The guys who have given Wilder issues are guys who give him movement, head movement, foot movement, all that kind of stuff to throw off his balance and throw off his range. Wilder's a big, tall, gangly guy. Sometimes he struggles to coordinate his limbs. That's why he waited so long to unleash against Ruiz because he wanted him to slow down sufficiently to give him an even more stationary target than Ruiz was at the start of the fight you know so he's he's bang on there talking about in order to beat Wilder you know you got to faint you got to move your head and preferably move your feet if you're uh if you're Michael Hunter so yeah goes on to talk about Usek he says and he's obviously fought Usyk before, that's his only professional loss back uh, down at Cruiserweight, he said, it's something I definitely want because I lost my first fight with him, but it will be different at heavyweight. I respect Usyk a lot, his ability and his charisma. He's one of the best boxers. He has a decent guard. 
I was able to hit him, but he stays very basic, which is something that we tend to miss. He keeps things very simple, which is a big thing. All right, so there you have it. Those are the words of Michael Hunter, him talking about how he reckons he would do against the top heavyweights out there. And if he had an opportunity to fight any of them first, it would be Tyson Fury. And I think he has the potential to give all the top heavyweights problems. But Wilder might be the guy who he gives the most problems. Just because I think Wilder struggles with his balance more than AJ and Fury do. Like AJ and Fury are able to get shots off on the move a bit better than Wilder. Wilder likes you to be stationary before he's going to, you know, let go with the shot. If you're moving around, he starts getting hesitant to throw his right hand. And the best example of that would be the Arta Spilka fight. Arta Spilka's moving around. Wilder didn't want to let his right hand go. He was cautious with his right hand because the guy was giving him so much movement. You know, even obviously in the Tyson Fury fight, to a great extent, um, Fury's movement was throwing Wilder off a lot of the time. He was missing with his right hand when he did let it, let it go. So, yeah, that's the key when it comes to Wilder, his movement. And Michael Hunter's got movement. So look, I'm not saying Michael Hunter beats Wilder or he beats Fury or he beats AJ. I certainly wouldn't be shocked if he beat at least one of them. Would not be shocked at all. Uh, I'm saying that he's competitive against all of them. And it will be a very interesting fight, I think, against any of them. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Michael Hunter versus the top heavyweights. Let's hammer them out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.